Hello, Julie. Hi, good evening. <laughs> we certainly had a good uh, talk there last night. and Of, of course, my name yeah. is Beetlejuice. Yes. Yeah, yes, well, we know your nickname, Beetlejuice, okay? You do look like Beetlejuice. But today is uh, March the 2nd, um, where I'm going to do a bit of a continuation on our uh, talk that we had last night about the two women who were kidnapped. It was a pretty intense, and I knew you were getting kind of upset, and that's why I kind of cut the video short. But uh, after we turned the cameras off, uh, you did come up with some more details. Yes, uh, I did. Yes, uh, I did. Uh, as I understand, there was a white van, and uh, then you also uh, turned around and said there was also a black car. So it wasn't the two girl women were not uh, taken together. This was two separate incidents. Two, two separate, is it? Yeah. Incident and about a week, and about a week apart. About a week apart, yeah. About a week apart, okay. And uh, the other thing uh, you also mentioned was that uh, I don't know if it was a guy in the white van or the or, or the guy in the um, black car, but you noticed that uh, just before they took uh, the uh, girl in front of you, uh, that uh, they took a look at you. Yeah, they did. He, well, yeah, he turned. Well, yeah, he turned looking at me, but but he went he went straight down after that. Yeah, so he wasn't looking for me, really. He was looking for, for a target. For yeah, a target. Knew the shepherd. Yeah. But that target could have been you. It could, could have you, been me. Could you tell if it was that the old man or the young man? It seemed like the old man. He looked like a bald, bald guy. So, yeah. yeah. Could you tell if he was white, black? or White. White. White, uh, white male. Okay. White male. Yeah, very scary looking. Scary. My scary goodness. looking, yeah. Okay, that's, that, that's more of a help. There and so that must have been so. If he looked at you, was he driving the van? Do you know? Or? Yes, he was driving the van. Yeah. So there was and only one person in the van. One person, and that was him. So when he grabbed, you said the side door opened. So there must have been someone else that grabbed the girl. I'm pretty sure there. Yeah, it was somebody else hiding in the van to take the yeah yeah to take the victim. Yeah. Okay, so then you had the driver, and then you had a second person. Yeah, yeah, hiding. Okay. Yeah, well, van. hiding in the back of the yeah, van. Yeah, hiding in the, in the back of the van. Yeah. Okay, and then you also said that there there was a black car on the second uh, woman. Yeah, same thing, same thing. So there was a driver, and then someone just jumped out of the yeah back seat, probably. Yeah, there was two young yeah yeah two young black guys. Sorry, they were black guys. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. So there was a driver and two black guys yeah, jumped. Yeah, two black out? guys too in the car, you know. And uh, they said, "Hey, come on, hey, come on in, come here, let's talk about something," you know. So anyways, uh, so anyway, he, he grabbed the girl. He said, "Come in, come in the car." So. And they left pretty fast. Yeah. Okay. That time too. So, yeah. Well, that's uh, so that was black. Okay. These people were black. Two okay. males. Yeah. Two black males. Yeah. Well, this is what we've been talking about, and when I did my presentation to um, City Hall there the other day, we were talking about predators. This is a, a really good example. Unfortunately, it was six, seven years ago that this happened. Correct. Did you ever call the police, sir? No, I was in shock. I was too traumatized. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't say nothing. I mean, uh, the first week uh, I was taking, uh, well, I, I was thinking about it, but I just let it go, you know. So, I, just, I mean, I, I should have done something before, yeah. But, I mean, I, was, I wasn't shocked too much, yeah. Well, that's what uh, trauma does, unfortunately, to people. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, you I've can't... been shutting my mouth for 20 years. You know, I had, I had to shut my mouth on the street for 20 years. Why, did you, today. why, did, why did you feel you had to shut your mouth? Oh jeez, a lot of control on me, a lot of heat on me. You know, I I've been I've been harassed so many times, so I I had to I I had to zip it. So you were afraid of reprisals? Yeah, that too. Yeah. Have you had reprisals for opening your mouth at all? No, no, but I've been threatened a lot for my life. Yeah, a couple of times. Yeah. What kind of threats did you receive? My God, yeah. If you say something, I'll uh, I'll I'll do something. I'll come back and, and hurt you really bad. You know, you know, I, I've been harassed. Uh, you know, they want to kill me a couple times, couple guys. You know, on drugs, on booze. So I mean, uh, I take it seriously. You know, and then uh, yeah, and at the four five four, uh, yeah, here not too long ago, too, in the shower. So, yes, I, mean, I know. That's a lot of, we we did a video there on the shower yeah, as well. Yeah, so him too. Very dangerous people. So I gotta shut up once in a while. I got to. Because I know. I can get hurt. I can get hurt really badly. And uh, yeah, you know, and, and and oh yeah, and you can pull a knife on me. And they already did twice, so. So and you've had, you, well, I know about the bus stop one. We've already talked about that yes, one. And you yeah, said two. you've had another knife pulled on you when? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. It was only the one time, sorry. Oh, sorry, only the one time. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. It's the one time, uh, yeah, with the girl, oh, uh, my God, uh, uh, yeah, uh, in Hall. 
Okay, that was the one so, that we've already done that video yes, on that. Yeah, so it's already said then, yeah. So since that incident, it's like, oh my God, man, I'm, I'm watching my back a lot more, Christine, yeah. I know, you have to, because uh, like I said, it's uh, getting really bad down here. And today we just learned that North, Nordstrom's leaving the area too. And yeah, that's too bad for, yes, the, yeah, uh, yeah, for, the, yeah, uh, for the clientele. Yes, and that's because I I suspect too is because of the shoplifting in the that stores too. there. Very, and very, was, very, I know they came on with the uh, and tried to express this as well to uh, city hall or, or to our councillors at the meeting the other day as well. So this is this is really bringing our 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 businesses down as well. Exactly. And in a very mm -hmm. vibrant area and a very special area that we should have for the tourists and for people to enjoy themselves down here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And everybody is losing their business over the crazy criminals down here. So, yeah, the thieves. Yes, exactly. And, you know, and, 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 you know, you know, and they want us to pay, you know. So, their dirty job, well, I mean, stealing and the losing their, mm -hmm. like, you know, their business, it, it, it's not right for nobody. No. But I know I can understand how it is to be traumatized. And like I said, I cut the video short because I also understand that and, uh, having PTSD myself, I, I started seeing the, the results and I didn't want to push you too hard last night. It's okay. I want to be pushed hard now because, you know, I, I know. I, I've been healing, healing myself. Well, I've been healing over the years too. Over the years too. But yeah. I get sensitive once in a while. You but know. you and I are, have got to know each other enough that we're quite comfortable to talk. Yes, we are so comfortable So I'm to glad talk. you, after we put the camera down, I'm glad you were able to recall a few more details. Sure. Uh, about it, it came back to me like a flashback, yeah. Yes. Well, that's what happens. And uh, just to explain, and I want to give one example uh, with my uh, ex-husband, one of my first husband, the police officer, uh, how flashbacks and, and this occurs and when you have PTSD. Uh, he was in a situation where he came home, he was in full uniform, he uh, opened the door, looked at me and told me to get in my corner. I was absolutely scared because he'd uh, come after me before. Several times? <laughs> yes, he'd uh, used one of his fancy police checks and I'd been thrown over the coffee table before. That was just one of the things. So I ran and I ran into the back bedroom. Uh, he came after me, he flipped me on the bed. Next thing I know, he had uh, his ha one hand around my throat. He had his other hand over my nose and my mouth. I couldn't breathe. I was seeing stars. I looked up at him, and when I looked into his eyes, he didn't even recognize me. I was, uh, and I was ready to pass out when he suddenly snapped out of it. And he says, oh, my God, what am I doing? And um, I finally, he finally calmed down, and I was finally able to talk to him, but he almost strangled me. At the time, to death, to, to death. death, yeah, because I had to wear turtleneck sweaters because I had his whole bruised handprint on my neck. Wow, wow! And uh, when I when I finally when we finally had a chance to sit down and talk, I uh, he turned around and he told me, you know, uh, I just took a suicide today, and it was not very pleasant, and I could certainly understand that. So it was best that I just sit there and we talked about it. And yeah, um, not he's, to push us, yeah, not to push it too much. Not yeah. to push it. No. Nope. But uh, we sat there, we talked about it, and he explained to me, well, um, the guy had taken a life insurance policy out on his life two or three days prior. He went into the garage, used a gun, blew his brains out, hoping that his, his family would get the life insurance. And, of course, when you commit suicide, you don't get life insurance. No, but that's not. what But that's what he believed. And I, I said, well, it. I understand because uh, when you do that, the body is not too pleasant to have to look at. And he's, and then he said, well, it wasn't the body that got to me. It was the family weeping and crying. So this is some of the burnout that um, our first responders are seeing when they do have different calls. But this is what happened with me was he came back. He just totally lost it. And I, I was the one that got, took the blunt end of that, him losing it. And back in those days, they did not have mental health. Uh, it no. was just, you suck it up and take it. Yeah, you suck it up and take it, yeah. yeah you know? But today... But today, yeah, now we're, we're opening story. up about mental health and everything yes, else. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. You know, and there's more protection for women, abuse women, too. Yes. You know? And so, that's, like I said, when I was in the shelter in 2010 with you, I've been through 40 years of domestic abuse. I'm a survivor of it with uh, two husbands. And that was the first time that uh, I was almost strangled. 
And what came back when you talk about flashbacks is I'm going to fast forward now to 2021 when George Floyd was killed by the police officer down in the States where he had his knees on his neck and he strangled him to death. The first, uh, It was hard on me and I, I was reacting because uh, this triggered me, the PTSD, because here it was, a police officer in uniform strangling this man, killing him. And I was seeing back on my bed with my husband in full uniform, my ex-husband in full uniform, wow. doing the same thing to me. Yeah, and it's, it's like shivers on your back. It's like shivers yeah. on your back. You know, and then it uh, it really affected me. And it took a, uh, probably a couple of weeks for me to get over that because I kept seeing those images. I couldn't get them out of my head of what had happened to me. And that was many years ago that this had happened. But this was a trigger for me. And again, um, thankfully, it, this turned out right, and he was charged for that. But the, the fact... police officer? Yes, he was. He's in jail yes. now for the murder. Okay, and your husband never got charged for that? No, not my he, first husband. He should have. Well, well, well back then, there, there was no mental... mental no, problem. there was... Uh, mental health. No, it was yeah. uh, the last six months of our marriage was upside down because he had the criminal elements as well that he got also involved in. It was a very complicated situation at the time. So... It's, this was just one of the things that happened to me. There's many things that happened during that six months to me as well. I believe, I believe it. And of course, when it, came, it hit the front page of the newspapers, but not the way it should have, and I couldn't even testify against them, and I couldn't even defend myself at the time. It just, uh, well, all they, all they said... Traumatized. Well, too traumatized, and all they came back was, was marital problems. Well, it wasn't just marital problems. This was job-related on this particular incident. Job related, and, and that's what and happened as well with my second husband. But I'm not going to go into that, um, no, today. Not. But I just wanted to show people on the George Floyd incident how a flashback can occur. Now, fortunately, that turned out, but this is what our, our first responders face every day. And with the PTSD, the same thing, thankfully, uh, that was never talked about, it was usually shell shock because thankfully, our Afghan soldiers coming back from Afghanistan brought the PTSD forward. Now we're talking about it much more. And this is one of the things that uh, I talked to a, an Indigenous veteran about it because I was having trouble at one point. So I talked to him and he said, this is what it is. PTSD is you end up living in 75% san insanity and you have to struggle to stay in the 25% sanity. Wow. And so that's basically what we're almost facing down here is we've got 75% insanity all around us as soon as you step out of the house. And the only place I can find 25% sanity is in my own home right now. Same, yeah, for real. Yeah, same here. Yeah. Me too. We have to hide from those crazy people, the predators, yeah. But it's pretty bad when you have to lock your doors and stay in your house. Just, really stay, bad. just to stay in, in some kind of sanity. Yeah, exactly. You know, so there's a lot of things that I can certainly understand. And like I said, with our first responders, we're the ones that if there's a, an active shooter, we're the ones that are running away from it. It's our first responders that are running right into it. So that I'm glad that they are now doing things to help our first responders, such as service dogs and, and like I have and, and stuff. So it's much better than it was, but there's still a lot of work that I feel it can be done. Yeah, a lot of work to do. And it's not over. So I'm not going to have a long video, but I just wanted to have a short video with you today and uh, sh uh, show people what trauma can do to people. And uh, I understand why you were so shocked, because that could have been you. It could have been me. You know, I was having nightmares too. By now today, I can live better with it today, and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm healing. Sorry, I'm healing from it today, you know? Well, I've, what's happened to me over the 40 years, you cannot... Put down in a five minute video, I tell you. No, you can't. No, but you the can't. nightmares were just horrible. And sometimes horrible. I still have Same them. here with my exes. Same here. And today, well, no, you know, you know I'm, a, I'm even stronger. And uh, I'm a survivor too, Christine. So, yeah. But this is something that really needs that. I think the mental health issue, I think it's good when even just you and I sit here and talk about it. It helps both you and helps me. But I, I realized you were, I could see you were getting uh, somewhat distressed last night when I did that video with you. So that's why I cut it short. And that's why I decided to do another video tonight with you. And I think this came out very well. Well, so, thank you, so, Christine. So I appreciate you talking to me. Yes, I, I feel much better tonight. You know? Yes, you're looking much better tonight. Thank you very much. You look pretty spooked out last night talking about that. <laughs>
a little bit. Yeah, a little bit in shock. Yes. Yeah, my Beetlejuice got spooked out last night. Yes, a, a little bit too much. A Which is your much. nickname on the streets for the viewers who don't do well, not I know. I try it. not to show it, but I, I, yeah, it's you know it's still there the expression, eh? Yes. You know, but yeah, I got I, I can deal with it now much better. Okay, and Thank so you. what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the video now. And we'll we'll hopefully have a good night. Okay? And thank you, Julie. Bye-bye. Right, bye. Bye-bye, sweetie. Take care.